So go to my website, go to tutorials, and check out the PCB tutorials. Just follow all the steps in here. You don't have to report your work when you are following all these tutorials, uh, but you do need to report screenshots, comments, and everything when you are working with uh, working on that tutorial we have in this class, okay? So you need to include screenshots, comments, and anything you want to put on the report. I'm not asking you guys to create a super long lab report. That's not the, super, the most important thing. You, if you have been in my other classes, you know, you kind of know that, right? I do need you guys to have the skill set, which is a lot more important than the report itself. So I want to see you are managing the skills of making a PCB, but not spend like 90% of the time to get a super long report. But you do need a report to show you have done the work, like screenshots, comments, uh, all these things. All right? um, follow the tutorials if you haven't, and then come back here to start working with the PCB design. Let's make clear, make clear about the goal. Okay, so the goal is to make something like this. So here's the one I made in the summer. There are issues, two issues, not big issues. So I'll try to make the PCB, I find out there are two little issues. Um, you couldn't see where are the issues, I, I promise you, but tiny issues, but it's working. So I want to let you know when you are following a tutorial, you don't want to make the same mistake. So this thing here is a power module, which is able to provide uh, two different types of voltages, 3.3 .3 and 5. As they are the most common voltages you need for your microcontrollers. And three, uh, two different voltages, but four, totally four different outputs. So which are one amp, 3.35, three amp, 3.35. You got that? So two different voltages and with two different current readings. So I think this one is better than the one you are doing kit, right? That one can only provide one amp for the two different types of voltages. So this can be another product in the future, but however, it's not really nice for now. It's not uh, the, the final version. So what I'm doing here is I have all the labels, which is a screen, silk screen layer on the PCB after you learn a tutorial, you'll know what is a silk, silk screen. So the silk, silk screen is actually the white paint or text you can put on the board. That's that that layer, okay? And uh, so the way I can, you, see, you can see here I have a power 3.3 volts, one amp input. So I got a, a the, the power comes in, and if I use this little jumper, you can see I can plug this off from the board. I don't have to turn on every module whenever I'm trying to use it. So for example, I'm, I only need five volts and three amps. So what I need to do, I just need to put this jumper to here. So I turn on that three amp and five volts module, but all the other ones are not being part up since I'm not using that. You know what I mean? So you need to add this function onto your PCB, but it's all included into the tutorial. So you, if you look at the tutorial, you'll know how to do it. It just breaks the wire, right? Just break it in the middle. You have two headers, right? Two headers available. So here's a major input, the power. And the other side is the input for the PC regulators. If you put a jumper wire on the top, you just make the connection and that one is being powered up. That's it. That's why I need at least uh, jumper wire to turn on uh, which model you want to use. I think we can keep this jump, jump, uh, this kind of jumper here. I don't, I couldn't think about another 
better solution, which is low cost and simple. If you have another idea, let me know. Uh, because we have four different types of outputs, right? Sequence variables, one amp, five volts, one amp, sequence variables, three amp, and five volts, three amp. So four different type, four different outputs. And if you want to use a switch, you probably need a switch has two, has four channels or four connectors. I don't have it. So what I have, what I only have in my in my office or in my lab is this guy, which is on and off. Uh, if you think you want to include this guy onto a PCB, do it. I can give you one of these. Uh, but how do you want to use it though? Probably a major switch here. Right after plugging everything, plugging the adapter so you can power up until here. But unless, but until the user turn on this guy, uh, the board won't have any current flow into it, right? So can, this can be used as a major switch. So what's the purpose for this major switch? I mean, this kind of like a better user experience, right? If you look at the all the equipment and instrument around you, they not only have this jack header, they will have a switch as well. Your computer, you plug in, but you have to push that push button to turn it on. Something like this. You don't want to always turn off your power supply by plug off here. <laughs> that just feel like a little bit awkward. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it if you want to include this switch right after this uh, jack connector. So that's a uh, one amp 3.3, one amp five, uh, three amp 3.3, three amp five, and for this high current uh, buck converter, so they are actually buck converters, step down DC regulators. They need a, a large inductor here, so one here, one here, and the value for these two inductors are being calculated from the online software from TI. So just go to their website um, and they will give you a specific uh, uh, recommendation for inductors to use. But it's not critical. I mean, you can, so it, I got a two values, 470, 330, but you don't have to use these two values. It's not critical. It's just the energy converter. And um, so that's the final product. And since you couldn't see what's underneath this DC converter, if you look at here, I think it's uh, this direction. So that's the original PCB. And I have this chip being soldered here. I can see the how many five pads to solder the five pins of this chip. But however, you couldn't see that, but underneath this package of this chip, it is actually a metal. So it's a ground pad, ground pin, but large, larger than normal. Uh, it's because all the power modules, they do need a large ground pad for heat dissipation. Because all the current will run through the same power module for your circuit. So it's creating a lot, it's gonna create a lot of heat. And underneath it, it should be a bare copper just copper, metal, but not this kind of solder mask, which is a paint on the top. So the blue paint, the blue color or the PCB, is called the solder mask, right? Which is a paint. And you shouldn't have the paint for this pad because you couldn't solder your metal to here. It's been covered. So that's the first mistake I had. You know, because I was thinking this line, what, I, what I'm drawing here, uh, used to be able to stop the solar mask, but actually it didn't in Eagle, Eagle PCB. All right, I ignore that. I think I made a, the same mistake in another PCB earlier than this, but I just forgot. So uh, if you want to make a, a, a fire copper, it's super simple. Use the layer, which is called T-stop. T means top. Stop means stop the solar mask. And just draw a box, it's the same color. That's why it's super easy to ignore that. The same color of the layer on the PCB is also white color. Just do a white box. 
to uh, circle that area, which you, you don't you don't need any story mask on the top. Then finally, you are getting a uh, uh, buyer copper uh, on the PCB, so you can solder your ground pad to it. That making sense? Okay. So T stop is a layer to draw that box to avoid solder mask or paint to cover the copper. B stop, bottom stop, which is going to draw a, a solder mask stop layer at the bottom of the PCB. So here, top, bottom. Okay, so you can draw T stop on the top, B stop at the bottom to avoid any paint to cover your copper when you don't want that to be covered. So because I customized this library, you know, it, it's pretty simple, right? So when you are trying to design a library or a part in your Eagle PCB for this device, so you are just drawing a footprint uh, for uh, or layout view for this device. So what is that view? It's just like five paths and a little square. So that's the layout view of your device. When you are designing that device, the specific customized device in your Eagle PCB. The reason is the library doesn't have that device available for you. So that's why you have to customize it. Have to make it up by yourself. If you're lazy, you don't you really don't want to spend the time to do it, there's another option. What is that? Or you already know how to design device, but at the very beginning, I highly recommend you guys, if whenever you couldn't find that specific device in the library, make it on your own by yourself. Do not download it from <laughs> GitHub or Google. So that's another option, right? So after you are super good at it, and you don't think you need any other practice, any further practice, you can just Google it, like this part, just Google the name of it, and E and followed by Eagle, uh, Eagle PCB package or Eagle library or something. Uh, I think 80% of the chance you will find it on Google. Uh, but if you are designing a really application specific PCB or using some, some of the parts, not too many people are using, maybe you won't be able to find the library online. So somebody may not, since not too many people are using and so not too many people are going to submit it or upload it to GitHub or somewhere else. So you still have to make your own one. So in order to um, have, you, have everybody you know, be able to make all the customized devices in the future, so just go ahead and make it your own. It's not super difficult. So at the first time, probably it's gonna take you like 15 to 20 minutes to, to make one for the first and second time. And in the future, it just take you five, five minutes to make a customized library every time. Easy. All right, so that's the first issue, minor issue here, when you are, but I haven't uh, revised it on the tutorial. So you are going to, if you follow every step on the tutorial, you are going to make something like this. So make sure you have a T-stop for this part, okay? The first one. And the second one, I think I customized another capacitors package. I forgot which one that was, but probably, let me see. Wait. Maybe this guy. So that's a capacitors footprint or layout view. And, uh, I think I didn't make the distance between, oh no, that's, yeah, that's another thing I need to know, which is kind of important. So look at it. All right. Uh, let me see which one I'm talking about. All right, let's look at this one, for example. So that's a capacitor. So this is by looking at the, Two pads, you can imagine the bottom view of this capacitor. And because the pads 
is not extending to the outside of this frame. So you are not you are not having a metal exposed here, which means there's no, no place to heat up the pad using your solder iron tip. Do you get that? So up, for example, I'm start to solder this part, okay? And I grab a cap, which is this guy. I put it on the top. I'm trying to heat it up using a using a solder iron. But however, the metal is underneath, totally being covered by the cap. So I'm not able to heat it up. So I couldn't melt the solder. Did you get that? No, you didn't. <laughs> you haven't soldered too much, right? That a problem? Okay. We are going to do a lot this semester, no worries. Um, so solder will melt when you heat up, right? You know this, the solder material. When you are soldering the parts for the board, you have to heat it up using a solder iron, solder iron. For example, my, my finger is iron's tip. And I put the cap on the top. There's no place to heat it up because everything's been covered by the cap. What's the solution? Which side? But this is the surface mount. No through holes. Two solutions. All right. But no matter which solution you are going to use, the layout needs to be improved. This is not good enough. You just need to make this pad a little bit longer. So whenever you put a put a cap on the top, it won't be look like this. So you'll see a metal extruded from the, the bottom of this cap. All right, so you have a metal there and metal will conduct heat. So you just need to heat up that single little part of the metal pad to so conduct the heat to the bottom of the cap. And if you apply some flux, which will facilitate the flow of the solder whenever it's getting melted. So the solder will flow to the bottom of the cap and wrap up the pad, the pin of the cap, okay? And get that part soldered to the PCB. That's one solution, just make this longer, this part longer on both sides, make it longer. The second solution, but I still wanna make it longer. I don't wanna make this, this kind of sh short, being total, totally covered by the cap. The second solution is you don't need to, you don't, probably you don't wanna use a iron tip. You apply the solder paste. You can use a syringe to apply some solder paste to here. And you just put the parts, every single part of, on the PCB to the specific locations and put it on the heater, a uh, uh, hot plate, where I have a specific uh, hot plate for soldering and use hot air to blow it on the top. Since it's a low melting point um, solder, so the solder will melt and directly, you know, uh, wrap up everything, the pads, the pins, and when you cool, cool it down, the solder will be ready. Uh, won't be in the liquid form anymore, or in a in a paste form. It will be uh, will be solidified. That making sense? Kind of. Okay. One thing you need to know. Another thing. Then we are. I'm done. For devices and packages. So if you look at libraries. So I have. I've made all these different libraries by myself for my projects. And if I double click this one, I can open that library. So here is a really simple question. Since you probably have seen capacitors, the symbol of capacitors in either LT Spice or in here. So how many different types of symbols have you ever seen for capacitors in any tools? Out of spice anywhere. 
schematic in schematic two different types what they look like street bars two street bars and two wires that's for ceramic capacitors which doesn't have the polarities right the second type is this guy it can be a tantalum capacitor can be a electrolyte capacitor which has an and a cathode and you want to swap these two polarities on a circuit it's going to explode so plus always being connected to a higher potential and the other side to be connected to the ground for lower potential always all right so only two types of symbols to be used in schematics how many different types of layout view for capacitors many if you only look at this this guy so this board probably here is more obvious see this one is one another one another one another one so these two these three one two three these are probably the same footprints but this is a little bit different because you can see the paths are wider and it's smaller in terms of footprint and this one is a little bit different as well and these are surface mount capacitors but sometimes you have through hole capacitors ceramic capacitors will be the 0603 surface mount like this just two paths right just too many to to name <laughs> that's not infinite right there will be probably you may need to create like 20 or something in the future cover whatever capacitor you're going to use in the future uh, but however for for example we are not using or you are not using the large capacitors like these ones right these are in microfarad level if you are using something in like nanofarad level probably you can pick up these ceramic capacitors like this see this guy this guy all these things they are 0603 packages if you want to use a different capacitance for example 100 nanofarad 200 nanofarad 300 nanofarad but using the same package do you need to create different footprints for these different values in your library no right why is that let me draw the hierarchy for you Packages or footprint? Footprint? Yes, yeah, so the older version are using uh, uh, packages for footprints. So look at this. Device is, is a final device in the library. You can pick and place in your schematic. Symbol is the uh, shape or the drawing in schematic only. How many types of capacitors in terms of the symbol? Two. The straight ones and the curved ones, right? Just two. So it's just need two symbols in a library. How many footprint? Different types of footprint you have? Many, like 20. Okay? If you have the two types of symbols done and the 20 different types of footprints done in your library, you can create you know i don't know how many but you know infinite number of uh different devices in your library why for example i'm using this specific footprint and this specific symbol to create a 100 nanofarad capacitor and 100 101 nanofarad 101.1 nanofarad you know you just need to change the name 
Is that clear? So that's the concept of device, symbol, and footprint in Eagle PCB. If you do not have that footprint, create it, and you can use it for different types of devices. It can be 100 nanofarad, it can be 200 nanofarad, can be anything. So if you have created that specific footprint and symbol in the past, and you can, this is the next time you are creating a new device, it only takes you one or two minutes to create it in your library. Super simple. But if you haven't, if you haven't done that, you do need to draw the footprint as required. Is that clear? Any questions so far? Okay, cool. Mm. Okay, um, we, so I'm gonna uh, give, give the time to you guys. Oh, one more thing to show you. Compared to ESP32, because you can see this guy can do everything Arduino can do uh, with the Bluetooth antenna here on the PCB. So how you can program it? It's surface mount. You know, this guy. The reason I'm gonna show you is you can see this little socket. So I can put it here and push. So it is able to snap it to the socket. So don't need to start on this one and desolder on this one every time when you want to reprogram it. Like this. Okay. Another thing I want to let you take a look is the substrate or the holder for the PCB. If you look at this one, I don't have any holder at the bottom. So I have all the wires and everything. If you have anything on the table, may accidentally short some of the wires, which is not good. And also it's not flat. You can see it's like shaking, it's not stable. So just in case, if you can design a 3D printing structure like this to hold your module, so you can use your power supply, like something like this, um, and put, a, put on the table and it's gonna be pretty stable and you can connect any wires to the power supply to power up your other circuits in the future. So here's a holder. That's a really good design. I like it a lot. All right. You wanna start working on the PCV? If you have any questions, let me know. I can help you.